Welcome to Star Citizen and the ship guide to the Drake Corsair. In this comprehensive modular guide, we will go into detail about one of the most powerful ships in the verse to date, which offers a wide range of possibilities for various gameplay areas and also has an iconic look, the Drake Corsair. The Corsair was already introduced in 2017 and as a multi-crew exploration ship, offers Drake's fiery answer to the popular Arizai constellation series or the Origin 400i. We therefore get to the bottom of the question of whether the Corsair has to hide from the Connie or 400i as an explorer or can even set new standards here. But first of all, a big thank you to the true ladies and gentlemen who make this video possible with their support as Patreons, channel members or Twitch subscribers. Thank you! We start with the exterior and the technical data before we move on to the interior, the various civilian uses, the enormous combat capabilities and, of course, a conclusion. The Corsair is listed in the exploration category and offers a lot of space with a length of 53 meter, a width depending on the wing position of 56 or 27 meter and a height of 31 or 11 meter. Speed and agility are roughly in the same range as the Constellation series, with the 400i being the best performer. Like its size 4 rivals, the Corsair also uses a size 3 shield generator and otherwise size 2 components. These are installed in civilian versions, although we recommend upgrading the quantum drive, power plants and shield to military versions first. With 72 SCU cargo capacity, the Corsair offers more than the 400i, but slightly less than the Constellation. The Corsair is only available at special sales for about $250 in the real money shop. From version 3.19, it will then also be purchasable in-game for an expected 5 to 7 million Alpha UEC. The Corsair can already be used solo without restrictions and we can reasonably accommodate up to 4 crew members. These have their own quarters, a kitchen, a bathroom and a lounge area. With its asymmetrical and convertible wing configuration, Drake's Explorer offers two different flight modes, which can also be used in combat. The main armament, on the other hand, is located on the nose and not attached to the wings. The cargo hold offers enough space for normal pieces of cargo as well as for vehicles of rover size, or even various small ships. We will look at an extensive selection of these later. As is typical for Drake, we can also make use of adjustable VTOL engines, which can be useful not only in the atmosphere. The landing gears provide sufficient grip on most surfaces, but stability may be compromised on uneven ground. The Corsair has a double cockpit, which is distributed over two levels. The co-pilot currently has access to the remote turret located in the rear. The lower weapons phalanx appears to be rotatable, but this function is not yet available. Nevertheless, the Corsair uses four size 5 and two size 4 hardpoints, which are operated by the pilot alone, in addition to the missiles. Thus, the Corsair offers the most powerful pilot armament in the verse so far. The equally well-armed Constellation offers only about half as much firepower here, with the 400i able to offer only a fraction of the damage potential. All 8 side 3 missiles can be found under the protruding right wing. In the standard configuration, the Corsair is equipped with 4 times size 4 as well as 2 times size 3 laser cannons, which fall back on a gimbal. The two manable turrets and the remote turret each uses two size 2 laser repeaters. In the standard loadout, we achieve 2875 DPS with a high 1220 alpha damage, as well as about 20,000 missile damage. In our recommended PvE loadout, however, we achieve an extremely strong 4576 DPS as well as enormous 6640 alpha damage. You won't find more pilot firepower anywhere else so far. 
And for absolute damage maximization, we alternatively resort to a ballistic cannon loadout with over 11,000 DPS and over 8,000 alpha damage. All through here, we have to work with extremely scarce ammunition. Now we come to the interior of the Dracosair. The double folding and extending stern ramp along with the passenger lift in the front of the ship offers the main possibility to get into the ship with vehicles. In addition to some accessible ship components, the cargo grid with 72 SU of cargo capacity is also located here. A small special feature is the separately activated cargo lighting, which is based on a floodlight. Following the cargo hold is the central engine room. Here we find, among other things, further ship components, terminals and access to the docking area with its own ready room. If we continue straight ahead, we reach the crew areas, but first we turn into the docking area. Here we find various weapon compartments for all sizes, as well as separate stowage facilities for spacesuits. The typical Drake double airlock to the outside offers us another access in zero gravity or even the possibility to dock with the Corsair. The weapon compartments offer plenty of space for all kinds of equipment and firearms, while on the opposite side of the room we again find appropriate storage for heavy equipment. But we come to the crew area, which has an open kitchen, a bathroom and three individual cabins. We also find a lift here. The table offers space for up to 8 people, a through of course we have to do without further comforts such as upholstery or wall paneling. However, we are not part of a Corsair's crew for fun, here we have to work and share our hard-earned booty. The combined bathroom also offers rudimentary facilities, all through all crew members and the captain use it. The comfort of the individual crew quarters is also rudimentary, with the captain's quarters in the bridge area differing only slightly. A bed, some storage space and lighting must be enough for a real Corsair. But before we get to the bridge area, past the lift, we find the two manable side turrets again. These are secured separately when in use and are then uncoupled from the ship in the outer area whereby a very extensive firing range is available to us here. Here, even forward engagement is possible, which further increases the offensive capabilities of the Corsair. But we will go into details about the turrets and the combat capabilities separately. Finally, in the bridge area we find the cockpit, as well as behind it the access to the co-pilot's cockpit, which is located one level below. The captain's quarters are also located here. The bridge area does not have to contend with a lack of space as there would have been some terminals, storage facilities, weapon compartments or even direct access possible here. The cockpit offers access to four MFDs, whereby we find a mirrored MFD on the right side of the floor as a small bonus. The switches and buttons are enormously varied, which most areas already physically switchable. And besides a small fan, there is of course enough room in the cockpit for a bobblehead. For the co-pilot, it's one floor down after he takes his seat and currently the remote turret in the rear area can be controlled from there. However, the positioning of the cockpit and the directly attached weapons phalanx imply that it might also be possible to control the lower size 5 hardpoints soon. A special feature can be found in the lift, which can not only be used to exit the ship downwards, but also offers the possibility to reach the top of the ship equipped with a gravity platform. And since this is not only a convenience function, but also can be used tactically, we will take another look at this functionality later. But first to the civilian and peaceful uses of this exploration vessel. For the discovery of endless expanses, new unknown regions and lifeforms, as well as celestial bodies, it is appropriate to carry appropriate equipment and vehicles. 
which enables the Corsair as an exploration ship to make discoveries that no man has ever seen before. Well, that's what the advertising suggests at least. Nevertheless, the Corsair's multifunctional cargo hold allows it to accommodate a wide variety of vehicles and support vessels, making exploration much more enjoyable and easier. For this, rover-sized vehicles can be easily be accommodated in the cargo hold via the wide and stable stern ramp, and we can also accommodate other small vehicles in addition. This offers a wide range of combination options for additional vehicle equipment. So we can transport various vehicles to the next race and even have a spare in the hangar. Another plus here is the high loading sill, which gives us enough freedom with most vehicles. But also the Kruger P-Series with a P-52 Merlin and the P-72 Archimedes can easily find room in the Corsair. And if we retract the landing gear of the Argo MPUV, it too will fit comfortably in the cargo hold of a Corsair. Then the Pisces is also less comfortable, but can be accommodated without damage, and a medical variant in particular is ideal for the extended reconnaissance tour. When parking, however, our sure instinct is required after the rear end stops on the double folding cargo ramp. Damage does not occur, however. Once again, the MISC racer can be securely stored in a Corsair without any problems, which could be particularly interesting for racing teams. But of course, we can also take regular cargo, which means we reach the maximum load with 72 SCU, but there is still enough room for smaller vehicles, like a buggy. And in addition, the cargo hold still offers plenty of available space for loose cargo items that are not attached to a cargo grid. We can load an additional 40 to 50 SCU here. Not feasible are, among other things, the Nova tank, which cannot be accommodated to do its height. Also not possible is the transport of various ships such as the Origin M50, which have a wingspan that's too wide. Unfortunately, this also makes the Origin 85X impossible. And also vehicles of the Atlas platform are unfortunately not transportable due to their height. But let's take a look at the possibilities of the presented lift. Especially in ground combat, we can intervene in the battle from a secured position with a clear height advantage, whereby we also benefit to a large extent from the gun turrets of the Corsair. A future we hope to find in more ships soon. But let's move on to the combat capabilities of the Drake Corsair. Since the Corsair offers enormous firepower and can draw on the highest pilot armament in the verse, we set the bar for combat capabilities here accordingly higher than in other ships. Therefore, we first take a look at the solo options, followed by the options with a full crew, atmospheric combat, as well as solo combat against capital ships such as the Aegis Idris M. The enormous firepower poses a considerable threat to every PvE opponent currently available in the game, with smaller ships in particular usually going up in smoke after just one salvo. But even opponents like a Hammerhead usually only have a very short survival span. Due to the side 3 shield generator, the Corsair also offers more than adequate performance in the defensive area in combination with the good hull hit points. However, there is a danger here with all opponents who are behind the Corsair and can stay there, as even with a full crew it is not possible to intervene here. Therefore, in our opinion, the Corsair is not suitable for PvP, or only to a very limited extent. With the support of a crew using the two manable turrets, as well as the remote turret, we increase our damage potential considerably whereby the pilot armament still accounts for by the far largest part of the potential. Here, it doesn't matter which opponent we go into battle against, 
whereby we can compensate for the noticeably limited maneuverability and agility of the Corsair, especially in space. Here the combat behavior is very close to the Constellation series. But even in the atmosphere we can hold our own against any PvE opponent with a four-sided flying style and with an eye on our shields. However, it is much more difficult to get smaller opponents into the field of fire. But let's look for a PvE opponent who can really pose as a threat. In this case, an Aegis Idris M in atmospheric combat, solo, currently offers the maximum threat in the verse. Here it is a prerequisite to pay attention to the shield regeneration, to have an eye on weapon ranges and to use a well rehearsed crew. However, solo combat with a Corsair is also quite possible. Due to the enormous damage output, as well as the sufficient capacitor energy, considerable damage is possible even at long ranges. Thanks to the Psi 3 shield, however, close combat phases can also be survived unscathed, whereby single hits on the hull, especially for the weapon systems, usually remain without consequences. The overall package of the Corsair for combat currently offers more than sufficient possibilities for any confrontations in the PvE area, whereby the capabilities of a Redeemer are clearly suppressed. Therefore, the Drake Corsair is an absolute recommendation for every combat oriented player who also wants to use a variety of multi-crew and cargo options. However, the Corsair also offers capabilities outside the purely combat oriented areas of the game. Let's take a look at the atmospheric flight characteristics and come to the conclusion of the Drake Corsair. In the atmosphere, the Corsair flies predictably and is easy to steer. However, its size and limited dress performance are not conductive to displaying agile maneuvers. However, thanks to the dedicated VTOL engines, there is sufficient thrust even in the vertical. In conclusion, we can unreservedly recommend the Drake Corsair to any combat oriented citizen who is looking for maximum firepower in the PvE sector. In addition, there is an extensive equipment, multi-crew capabilities, as well as a comparatively reasonable price, considering $250 in the Star Citizen context. And a thank you for the support with the recordings to the members of the Royal Retirement Launch, General Tic Tac, Red Al Ghul and Bernie.